Elon Musk and NASA have been very busy working to find out everything there is to know about the Red Planet over the years. NASA has developed a strong interest in Mars and has launched many drones to study the planet. Elon Musk closely follows the work that NASA is doing on the planet and hopes that humans will be living on Mars in a few years. When they knew the impacts of this discovery, he joined us to learn about the discoveries made by NASA about the planet Mars and what it means to him. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe and enable all notifications so you don't miss out on the latest from Melon Musk and his news. Let's go to the waters. Mars was home to life about 3 million years ago, but now they are two completely separate planets. The Red Planet, as it is known today, is a dry and cold place where it would be impossible to live there. However, this has not always been the case. There is evidence that humans could have built a self-sustaining habitat, and that sooner the planet lost its magnetic field and protection from the sun's wind that largely stripped Mars of its atmosphere. For this reason, new investigations have been carried out with the spectrometer. Images aboard the NASA orbiter. Researchers have identified the science of hydrated materials in different locations where mysterious streets have been observed to appear in areas where the temperature was above 10 degrees Fahrenheit or below 23 degrees Celsius and to disappear in colder weather, indicating that salt water still flows beneath the surface of these dark, narrow streets known as recurring door rows. This can keep the liquid at much lower temperatures due to its salt content. The European Mars Orbiter has confirmed this possibility and that Mars is not a lifeless and barren place as we think. SpaceX provide more details on the possibility of the presence of water on Mars. In fact, he discovered that the surface of an ice sheet covering the tilts of the South Pole of Mars was rising. The data suggests that liquid water could be found there. We have known for a long time that the Red Planet has water ice caps at its poles but these were generally believed to be completely frozen due to cold weather. After studying the surface topography of this area provided by Mars Express, the team has found an ice sheet between 9 and 14 Kelvin m long, similar to ancient glacial remnants in subglacial lakes on Earth. This means that the water beneath the glacial remnants of Mars must still be geothermally active. How can we know if there is a chance for life on Mars with enough dissolved oxygen to support microorganisms and even primitive animal life like sponges? Life is possible wherever there is water. However, due to changing temperatures and weather conditions on Mars, caused by the tilt of its axis of rotation, the concentration of dissolved oxygen varies from place to place. Cold temperatures allow more oxygen to penetrate brines and icy pockets near the Martian poles may contain enough oxygen to support complex multicellular organisms. The Mars rover Curiosity found magnesium oxide while exploring the 154 Kelvin m large Gale Crater. A large amount of dissolved oxygen is necessary for the production of minerals like this. Only after oxygen began to persist in the atmosphere, about 2.5 billion years ago, is there a chance for life to exist on Mars? Magnesium oxides began to form on Earth. However, as we already know from the anaerobic organizations found on Earth, oxygen is not necessary for life. But its presence on Mars opens up many interesting development paths, including discussions about the survival of humans on the Red Planet. NASA, in collaboration with the European Space Agency and Russia, has relaunched the rover to find ancient signs of life on Mars. The Perseverance rover is currently exploring the geologically rich G0 crater to gather more information about the planet's past or present. The 45 Kelvin m wide G0 crater contains a delta that formed about 3.5 billion years ago from the convergence of a lake and a river. Perseverance is searching for and collecting sedimentary rock samples made up of particles of various sizes that have been deposited in a once great environment. March has a variety of weather. The main components of the Martian atmosphere that give the planet its current rusty color are carbon dioxide, argon gas, nitrogen, and oxidized dust particles. These particles are ejected from the planet's surface. 
However, the atmosphere of Mars is too thin to allow for climatic variations in these weather conditions, even though they are much more extreme than those experienced on Earth. Long-lasting planetary dust storms complicate the Mars exploration mission. For example, the dust storm near G0 Crater caused the delay of the maiden flight of NASA's Mars helicopter, which was due to make its flight on January 19th. It was wiped out by a powerful dust storm that swept across the red planet. Whenever Mars offered a life-saving opportunity, abilities were lost, as the storm blocked sunlight from reaching the rover's solar panels for days. It has also been determined that the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter discovered carbon dioxide snow clouds on the planet's surface, making Mars the only planet known to experience this type of precipitation. The planet's average daily temperature ranges from minus 195F or minus 125C at the North and South Poles to 10F on the mean day. As the fourth planet from the Sun, Mars is farther from the Sun than Earth, giving it a 187-day year instead of Earth's 365 days. Mars' axis is also tilted like Earth's, allowing sunlight to fall directly on certain parts of the planet, giving rise to its seasons. The general shape of its orbit is more elongated than that of the other major planets, which gives Mars such extreme seasons. When March is the closest month to the Sun, the Northern Hemisphere experienced a brief freezing winter, and the Southern Hemisphere experienced a hot summer. Today, the atmosphere and climate of Mars are mainly the result of having lost its magnetic field, although there is little known about the internal composition of the planet. Readings from the Car of Mars, meteorites, and seismic data from NASA's InSight probe suggest that it is composed of elements known as cast iron alloyed with sulfur and hydrogen relative to Earth. The magnetic field was driven by the enormous stream of molten metal. The planet's composition helped NASA scientists better understand what happened to Mars by depriving it of its magnetic field. The composition of hydrogen, iron, and sulfur was powerful enough to produce convection currents that helped create the planet's protective magnetic field, but it was short-lived before the currents lost their ability to generate a strong magnetic field. Mars' atmosphere may have been regularly depopulated by the solar wind without the presence of an armored magnetosphere to allow water and other elements to escape until the red planet is completely destroyed. Now, let's take a look around Mars last Christmas Eve, when a meteor struck Mars near the surface, causing a seismic wave. This was the first time that such seismic waves were observed on a planet other than Earth, and the NASA and reported information about these phenomena. The impact of the rock measures between 4 and 12 meters in diameter, to release energy between 2.5 and 10 kilograms which is almost the same as an atomic bomb, resulting in an area larger than a football field. According to D.R. Benjamin Fernando of the University of Oxford, meteorites formed most of the large fresh formations ever seen in our solar system, and the force of the impact treached into Risser in sight by diffusing through the mantle and deeper core of the planet. Although the phenomenon was unexpected, it provided a wealth of useful information that could help us determine the structure and composition of the crust of Mars, which until now has remained largely unknown. The marked division between the northern and southern hemispheres of Mars, and one of these distinguishing features is that most of the craters are found in the southern hemisphere, which is mainly mountainous. It is the location of Mount Olympus, the largest volcano in our solar system, big enough to cover New Mexico. The Northern Hemisphere, on the other hand, is mostly smooth and dark. Many theories claim that the two hemispheres are composed of different materials with different evolutionary histories that have evolved in response to differences in the crust. However, recent impact evidence refutes these beliefs, showing that the crust may share a similar structure and composition, and once the data has been thoroughly analyzed, it may provide valuable insight into how Mars was created and developed. More information can provide specific details about the environment on the red planet billions of years ago and whether or not real life existed there. Do you think there is enough oxygen on Mars to support life? In the comments section, write yes or no. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe with all notifications enabled so you don't miss out on the latest news.